SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assists them in their everyday with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEMrush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workflow. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order and optimize blog posts in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at semrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEMrush. Dawn, thanks for flying to Boston to see me. You're welcome. No, yep. <laughs> We're at uh, Tech SEO booth and you gave an awesome presentation thank on yeah. everything, information retrieval and beyond. Uh huh. Thank you. And that's your hobby. That's what you do for fun. That's what you said. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you tell people who you are? Uh, I'm Don Anderson, and yeah, I run a small boutique, they call it, don't they? Agency in Manchester, UK, called oh. Bertie, yeah. How, I mean, you named it Bertie before Google Bird came out, right? Yeah, well, it's named after my dog, which I've yeah. had for six years. So. And you named your dog before? Yeah. Why you name your dog Bert? Well, because I like the name Bert, and actually, Bert's a female, but I like, I bought the dog after I picked the name for the dog. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so. I bought, I picked the name, then I picked the dog, then I changed the name of the business to the dog's name because it was a single word. Right. And then Bert came out. Yeah. Okay. And then Google copied you. Yeah. They, yeah. They, but they the, let's talk a little about your history. So you, you started in SEO in like 2006. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you always into the science behind how search works back then? Uh, well, actually, I got interested in crawling first a few years ago before I became interested in IR because uh, I'd had some issues on a, on a site. That uh, one of my own projects that had it almost like ended up with this whole notion of crawl tank where it had an infinite loop. And after that, I became a bit hooked on like following any sort of comment whatsoever by uh, SEO. Uh, Google spoke to people about crawling, reading loads of papers, and, uh, and then that kind of naturally led me into Google Scholar. And then it naturally led me into thinking, oh, I'm going to go to some of these IR conferences. And then as soon as I did, I was like, oh my God, this is all amazing. So I started buying books. I have like loads of books on IR. I read them on planes and things. And yeah. That's awesome. But it's, a, it's not an easy topic, no. but it's so interesting. And I don't need to know all the formulas. I only need to understand all the concepts. Right. Yeah. That matter oh, to SEO. Only, only have to understand the concepts. Yeah. That's an easy thing yeah. to do, right? But they just take, it's like anything. It's, it just takes time. It does. Yeah. I used to read a lot of the patents back when I first started in like 2001 or 2002. And then I just relied on Bill. Yeah, Bill does a great <laughs> like, job. You know Bill does a great job. Yeah, Bill does a great job. So you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about Bert, um, uh -huh. since that's the hot topic since that. You knew that. I mean, could you just maybe, maybe explain what Bert does so that people can have a, like a simple understanding of what Bert does? Yeah, okay. So, so with, with Bert, Bert helps search engines or anybody that implements it because we have to remember here as well, Bert is two things. That's very, very important. Bert is a paper which was open sourced or a natural language model, training model if you like, for anybody to use. And actually I know that there's people in the SEO space using it to like build tools and so forth like Hamlet and I think Andrea Volpini and a few others and JR just did something really interesting with it the other day. So that's Bert, the model that is open source and anybody can take it at the basic training level and just fine tune it for their own purposes. So if you, you could really draw a parallel with like, hey, here's a vanilla version of WordPress, do what you want to make it your own. So, but also then we have Google BERT, which is the algorithmic implementation, which I don't believe is actually, I don't think it looks anything like the original Google BERT paper because that has been extended on a lot over the past year by the likes of Facebook. Facebook brought out something called Roberta because they claimed that BERT wasn't actually that well trained and uh, they literally trained it more and Roberta is their model and it stands for a more robust BERT. And obviously Microsoft are in there and a huge amount of others. So the point is basically BERT helps with contextual understanding. It's a natural language model. The past natural language models that were trained were trained in this order called unidirectional. So what that means is they have fed, if you like, sentences to learn the context of words together. But the past models only looked at sentences in the order in which the words came out, either left to right or right to left. 
Bert uses this notion of bi-directional and that is in the name as well and that means that if it takes a sentence it actually looks at all the words to the left and all the words to the right at the same time using this attention as well they can take all of the words into context the reason why that matters also massively is because the meaning of a word is its use in a language that's a famous quote by a philosopher called Ludwig Wittgenstein from the 1950s what that means is this the word run or get, I can't remember which one, has 606 possible meanings. It's the largest entry in the Oxford English Dictionary. But the different words can mean different things depending on how a sentence develops, yeah? So the word like could be a noun or a verb or whatever, depending on where it is in the sentence and the other words that are in the sentence with it. So Bert helps to understand cohesion of words together in okay. the sentence. Yeah. That's good. All right, so I have some questions you probably don't have the answers to. Yeah. But I want you to guess. Uh -huh. So Bing also uses BERT. Yeah. They said they've been using BERT since like well before Google started officially using it. Yeah. But Google, Bing says they use it for all queries yeah. in all languages. Google yeah. says they only use it for about 10% of queries in English only right now. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think Google's focusing on the 10% of the queries? It seems to be more of the longer tail queries. Because uh, they're harder to understand and it's computationally expensive maybe. And I suppose Bing is doesn't service as many people. So you think it's <laughs> it a resource? Maybe just a, it's a resource thing. and efficiency. And actually, if I remember rightly, uh, at this web conference, at the webmaster conference in yes. San Francisco, Google, Google's John Mueller said, Bert is computationally expensive. Or he said it in a webinar, and it is, it's computationally expensive. It's really only needed in, in ambiguous situations. So you don't think Google will expand it beyond that because I think there's no real, probably will, but I think, the, the yeah. benefit is not as strong as the cost. I think, I think actually, well, Albert is the next generation of Bert okay. that's out there. The problem was over the course of a year, all the natural language models like Bert, Albert, Google Bert, and then there's others, there's even one called Big Bird. And Ernie, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, anything to do with Sesame Street. But basically, the models just got bigger and bigger and bigger and more expensive, yeah, because okay. they are expensive to train. So actually, Albert is a joint collaborative research work, of, uh, open sourced again, but between Toyota and Google, which is, if you like, the predecessor to BERT. Computationally less expensive, yeah, massively less expensive does kind of more or less the same with like mass is less parameters. So I think Google will extend it when it's more efficient, yeah, okay. and it costs less, yeah. That makes sense. Because obviously we know that search engine's biggest cost is the electricity bill. <laughs> so yeah, maybe so, it's that. So my, yeah, so my next question around BERT is, I mean, the whole debate about there's nothing to optimize for. Yeah. So you agree with that, I guess? I do, yeah. But yeah. there are ways you, by understanding that there is bird out there and how it works, will that make people write better content or no? It's just write the content like you're writing it. Well, obviously write great content, you know, that's a no brainer. The thing I see a lot is, and I don't know whether, I think Bert will probably be applied a bit to this, is I see a lot of people who write blogs and they are, they are yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't, they don't actually add much structure to their blog. I hate blogs generally, I find them very, they're not well curated from a uh, an library science perspective, yeah. So actually a lot of, there's like an inheritance notion in the web anyway, so obviously the category inherits from wherever, the subcategory inherits from the, it's a parent-child descendancy thing, and I see blogs very, very badly done with that. So I think, Regardless of BERT, people should be actually continually working on things like findability and structure of yes. information. Yeah. Yes. So I have that problem. I just write, but I don't spend the time going back and then putting like I make a nice, nice hubs page or landing page. With yeah. To group everything together and to build these like the hubs and authorities. This notion of like the bow tie of the web. If ever you read the paper by the bow tie of the web, really you want these like strongly connected components that are on a topic. Yeah. So I think there's still lots of things that SEOs and copywriters and webmasters and site builders can do yeah. that help, but potentially BERT may be used when a lot of that isn't present. Right. Yeah. That's true. And the other way, I guess, we were talking right before that SEOs, or you actually mentioned just before, that SEOs could actually use BERT in order to build better keyword sets and better understand their own content. Yeah. Um, any specific examples of that that you know of? Well, I know, for instance, that 
Ambiguity is obviously a huge issue. So we know that, I think it was in the Google example, mouse was, it could be a mouse that you use with a computer, it could be a mouse that's running along the floor. Right. I think that, I think it's just common sense to try and identify in your content areas for potential ambiguity and help to, Clear since we know that Bert's trying to understand that, one of the big issues, for instance, on location-based sites is Manchester, for instance, is a city in England, but it's also a city in the US. It's also a city in, I think, Canada, a city in Australia. Yeah. Things like um, disambiguation through the structure of your site is something that you can really help search with, yeah. Right. And I think just understanding the notion of ambiguity, I think we don't actually think and use our common sense sometimes. Right, that makes yeah. sense. And then yeah. you, build, you can build a whole database yeah. and say, where can yeah. I clear up things? Yeah, make where can concise. I help to like awesome. disambiguate? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I yeah. appreciate it. Where can people follow you and learn more about you? Uh, so on my site, obviously, Bertie.com. Uh, and uh, it's the one with lots of dogs on it. Uh, and uh, on Twitter, at Dorniando. And obviously, uh, Bertie, that's Be Bertie, I think, is my handle on Twitter for my business. And on LinkedIn, you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Yeah.